next section, shall we? Or at least sketch a graph, all right? So first, let's decide what kind of conic section it is. All right, uh, let's see, I see an x squared and a y squared. That means it's not a parabola. Um, the coefficients of the x squared and the y squared are both the same sign, so it's not a hyperbola. Okay, I'm honing in. The coefficients of those squared terms are different, so it can't be a circle. I think we have an ellipse on our hands, okay? All right, so you remember, uh, I hope, if not, you can go watch my video, on kind of the general form of an ellipse, the form that we often put it in to help us graph it, okay? This would be in uh, the standard form or close to the standard form of an ellipse, but we often like to rewrite it in a form that makes it easier to graph. And if you recall, the form that makes it easier to graph is this form, where we have a constant of one over there, and we have these beautifully factored binomials here. That gives me the center of the ellipse. HK is the center of the ellipse. And A is my displacement, how far I go right and left from the center, and B shows me my displacement, how far I go up and down from the center. So I somehow want to transform this creature into this creature. How could I do that? Any ideas? Ah, I'm thinking I'm hearing. Complete the square, sure. These are lovely, perfect squares. If I expanded them, they'd be perfect square trinomials. So let's try to create some perfect square trinomials up here, shall we? All right, to complete the square, I want to first gather up my x's, gather up my y's. Uh, oh, they're kind of already gathered for me, that's nice. If you recall, completing the square is pretty tricky unless I have a coefficient of one in front of that uh, square term. So I'm gonna factor out the 25. I'm gonna leave a little room there. Here I'm gonna factor out that y. Let's leave a little room, and that little negative four is hanging out on its own. Okay, so I wanna create a perfect square trinomial. Kind of the trick is to take half of the middle term, half of four is two, and I'm gonna square it to get four. And if we think about the pattern of perfect square trinomials, Sure, that's going to factor to that nice x plus 2 squared. That 25 is there, okay? Now let's do the same thing here. To turn this into a perfect square trinomial, I'm going to take half of that coefficient. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. That squared is plus 1. That's going to factor nicely into a nice y minus 1 squared. All right, but I can't just willy-nilly add things to that side of the equation without balancing it out. So here, I added a four, but hold on. I didn't really add a four, I'm really adding 25 times four. So by writing that there, I really added 100 to the side. So I can either subtract 100 from the side or add 100 to the other side. I'm gonna add 100 to the other side, okay? In this piece, I added one times four, so let's add four to the other side. Again, I'm keeping my equation balanced. Oh, doesn't that work out nicely? That gives me 100 on the right. Okay, I'm almost there. I want this constant to be a one, so I'm gonna divide everything by 100. That gives me one, that gives me uh, let's see, 4 goes into 100 25 times. And that goes in 4 times x plus 2 squared. Oh, how beautiful. Isn't that nice? So the center of my ellipse is going to be at negative 2, 1. I'm going to go right and left, 2 up and down five and create my ellipse. Let's just sketch that right up here. I'm just gonna erase the top of this. Okay. 
All right, so my center is at negative two, one. I'm going right and left, two. And then up and down, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is a nice eccentric ellipse. The more stretched out it is, the more eccentric it is. All right, well, again, sketching is not my strength. But there we go. There is a nice ellipse. We would call the longer axis the major axis. That's the minor axis. There's a nice ellipse.